is to carry to see to to uh, cannibals. Uh, now at the end, uh, now the only thing you can do is uh, take a cannibal and a missionary to the left, and lo and behold, now again you have that interchange, and then uh, this is the symmetric central move, and you can uh, you are halfway, and the problem has been solved. Uh, again, our solution is unique, provided that we allow the don't cares. Uh, if you have to specify whether this, uh, your first don't care and your final don't care is either a missionary or a um, cannibal, then it would be four solutions, but the parameters is one of those. The unspecified parameter is one way of mapping those four solutions on a single one. Um, now, the what this really this solution really profits from is that we do not distinguish between uh, the identity of the cannibals. Hmm? nor the identity of uh, the missionaries. And in our first move, uh, the missionary goes to the... Uh, if the missionaries were named, and we would distinguish the between them, and if there would be uh, Mark, John, and uh, Lucas, then we would have to choose which missionaries crossing the river, uh, not naming them. We just count and say, well, at least one missionary goes away. Now, that is the uh, general pattern of uh, counting arguments, and that's also their efficiency. Um, you see, in normal Um, primary school education, when children learn to count, hmm, they learn that uh, three apples take away, one apple remains two apples. And the next lesson they learn that three pairs take away, one pair uh, remains two pairs. And the next lesson they are elephants, etc. And uh, eventually, it is clear that if you are counting, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of things you count, and you can uh, map all these calculations to 3 minus 1, 3 take away 1 is 2. But there is something even much, much more essenti essential. And uh, the trouble is that if you take three apples, yeah? And now you say take away one, you can raise the question, which one? Shall we take away this one so that these two remain? Or shall we take the middle one away? Yeah. But by the time that we say that three minus one equals two, the question which one? is clearly meaningless. Yeah? And, 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 the, and the story is twofold. Uh, on the one hand, uh, if you have a number of objects and you cannot distinguish between them, the only thing you can do is to count them. On the other hand, if you have a set of objects and you capture their essence by seeing how many there are, you don't distinguish between the objects. Uh, and th 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 this is no joke. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the popular ways of um, verifying the correctness of programs these days is model checking. Um, however, uh, model checking can only deal comfortably with booleans 
and cannot deal comfortably with the integers. And therefore, if you have uh, a solution with, uh, which is essentially a congestion problem, if you wish to know how many processes are in what kind of state and, and are possibly interfering, etc. Et, et well, if you take the example of the readers and the writers, I remember that uh, with a fast machine, someone was very proud that he could uh, do two readers and one writer. And a few years later, there were faster machines and slightly more ingenious algorithms. And lo and behold, they could do uh, two writers and three readers. This model checking uh, process uh, is self-defeating in the sense that the number of states that have to be explored grows with the number of competitors in the exponent. So uh, you, the state space that you have to uh, explore uh, really explodes exponentially. And that purely because it's a technique that doesn't count. All solutions for the reader's writer's problem can be solved on the back of an envelope, provided that you're allowed to use arbitrary integers. Okay, now, uh, this was the first part. Uh, now the second part. For the second part, I have prepared my foils, because it's a complicated one. Uh, I will solve, or I will prove the same theorem twice. Uh, and uh, I will do that just in order to give you a feeling for the uh, significance of the difference in style in which I prove them. The first proof is combinatorial, the second one is a counting proof. Uh, here we are. Oops. I'm considering what is called a complete six graph that consists of six nodes, which you may call points, and their total number is six. That's what's meant by the six graph. The number of edges, that is the number of pairs, equals 6 times 5 over 2 times 1. Yeah, number of pairs. You have <coughs> plus 6 possibilities for the first one, and you have 5 possibilities for the second one, but then you have counted each pair twice. So there you are. There are 15 edges. You can continue, and you should ask how many triangles are there. Well, the triangles are, uh, uh, the total number is 6 times 5 times 4, divided over. 3 times 2 times 1, the order in which you could have arranged the... So there are 20 triangles. Now, that is the figure that I am considering in the rest of this talk. Only I add to this that each edge is either 